the topic today is called, the name of the class is, You Will Be Tamed or Die. You will be tamed or die. Because us as a people, it's sad to say sometimes we do have that, you know, anim animalistic instinct. We behave wild. And we don't want nobody to tell us nothing. But in this truth, it's very simple. It's either you're going to be tamed or you're going to die. There's only one way out. So if you leave this truth because you don't like how things get done, you're going to die. And if you're in this truth, but you're faking it, we had a class about that already, faking in the truth. What's the end of the result if you're faking in the truth? Death. Death. All right, so let's get it together. So we're going to start with Isaiah chapter 1, uh, verse 3. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. You see that? The most I considered us, compared us to two animals. Um, uh, ox or uh, ass, are they very smart animals? But the most I compared us to those two animals. Well, so what that says about us? We're not that smart. But a lot of times we get food by what? Who can answer? What fools us to, in, into having us thinking that we are smart? Get, pass him the mic. Raise your hand if you want to answer the question. Pass the mic forward. Stand up, state your name. My name is Elijah. I'm um, trying to make a loss. The Lord treat you in thinking that you're smart? No. We, we are being smart by keeping the laws. No, the question was, what tricks us in thinking that we're smart? Pass it to our brother John. Our title and accomplishment. And what? You're right. Titles and what? And the world. There you go, don't be scared. You got the answer, but you're scared. Titles and accomplishment. Because if Esau say you're smart, in your head you're smart. But true knowledge is what? Knowing the laws and applying them in your, in, in, in your life. So you can have all the accolades from the world. That doesn't mean that you're smart. If you're smart, you're gonna abide by what's written in the Bible. So most I compare us to two dumb animals. But it says, the ass and the ox knows his master's crib. So these two animals will know where they come from. They know their house, they know their masters. What is a common trait of an ass? What's another name for an ass? A donkey. What is a common trait that a donkey has that everybody always know about it? Who can tell me? Pass the mic to him. They're stubborn. But even though they're stubborn, the scriptures say they know their master's crib. So there's something else that always go along with a donkey. You got it, Joseph? They still know how to get home. From what? You got to give me more. They still know how to get home like they know who they are. A donkey has this attribute. No matter how far you take a donkey and take him away from it, I mean take him away from his house, he will find his way home. You just let him loose, he's gonna just walk right back home. You could have put him in a car, drive him 10 miles away, take him out the car, guess what he's gonna do? Start walking right back home. Somehow, somewhere he finds his house. But us as a people, we don't know who we are, we are destroyed. Not only with destroy, what makes it worse is the latter part. It says, my people does not consider. We don't even care to know. How many times we teach in the street, we're telling the people who they are, they don't know, they don't care. They don't even want to take the time to consider what you're teaching them. Read. Verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a sea of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Now, uh, pull up the definition of I for me, A-H. See if, because I has two, um, there's two distinctive ways you can use it. So let's see in which way the Most High is actually using it. 
Yeah, read that, dude. Move it over. Levi, move it over. The definition of I, used to express a range of emotions, including surprise, pleasure, sympathy, and realization. So, is, is the most I happy with that I? He's not at happy, he's actually disgusted. He's mad. Ah, sinful nation. Not like you have nice ice cream, you're like, ah. Same word, but two different tones. So he's actually not happy with, with us. He said, we are a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers. So it's given us all our characteristics. We are wild by nature. We don't care to know about God. We don't want to know about God. All we care about is being evil. As long as our pocket is full of money, we think we're good. Uh, we have provoked the Most High God into anger. And he said they are going away backwards. So instead of us making uh, forward motions into changing, into becoming the holy people that the Most High want us to be, we start moving backwards. Because why? We walked away from the Most High God. Our, by, by doing what? Our action shows that we don't want to be with the Most High God. So we have to be very mindful. Read. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. So the Most High is asking the question, why should you be stricken anymore? He don't want to keep punishing you. But based on our action, we want to be punished. That's why he's asking us, why should you want to be stricken anymore? You keep revolting, you keep revolting more and more, but that's not gonna that's not gonna change anything. It's just gonna make you worse. Say the whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. That means there's no soundness in our way of thinking. We are a sick people. We are rebellious. We are wild. So the most I give us this book to do what? To tame us. We're like that wild bush that's growing in front of the house. If you don't call the gardener to come trim it, even though it's grass, you're just going to have wild bush. Only when you trim it, then it looks nice. But it's the same It's the same thing, it's just grass and grass, so what's the difference? One that is well trimmed and one that's not. So, do you want to be wild and unkept, or do you want to be trimmed? You want to be trimmed, then how do you trim your, how do you trim? By keeping the laws. Read. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. So we, this is our condition. From the head all the way to the foot, we are sick as individuals. And because we still caught up in, um, like we I said earlier, in our titles, things that we have achieved in the world, we're still thinking that we hold these titles in the truth. No, the scriptures say you must humble yourself and become as a little baby. Because if you don't, you're going to remain sick. Read. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. So, do we, do we, don't we not fit the scripture? Are we living in our own land? There's not another people living in Israel right now. And right now we live in the land of our brothers. It's not another nation controlling that land. We are in captivity. But yet, we're walking around high-mindedly. As opposed to acknowledge that we are sick and come together as a people and to get out of captivity. Read. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. You see this? The daughters of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. Is a cottage a beautiful house? It's a little shack that you have in a plantation, you know, where you eat your lunch and go back and work. They say the daughters of Zion, who are the daughters of Zion? Israel, our women. So the most I compare us to a cottage. That means we are not in a good shape. In the kingdom, like it says in the book of Psalms, the women is going to be shaped after the similitude of a palace. Big difference. So today we are nothing. But Esau tells us we're something. By fooling us with their education and everything, so we keep walking around thinking that we are somebody. But the only way you're going to be somebody only if this is in your brain. 
Um, keep reading. Actually, we're gonna come back to, to that. Let, uh, let's go to First Corinthians, chapter one, verse twenty-six. The book of First Corinthians, chapter one, and verse twenty-six. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. What kind of thing God chose? The foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So God said we are the foolish things of this world. Think we more than that. No, we're going to be more than that when we apply these scriptures. Go back to um, um, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts hath left unto us a very small remnant. Actually, no, read verse 8 again. Verse 8. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage and a vineyard, as a lodge and a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. What happened when a city is besieged? You guys ever seen the war movies from of old with the swords and, um, um, you know, attacking the castles and everything. What happened when they besieged the city? They're bombarded with hell fire, big stones. And when they're done with it, with it, it's just burnt out. That's what the Mosai is comparing us to. He said the daughters of Zion are destroyed. So we must come back to the book in order for us to eventually grow and to become that palace that we're supposed to be. Uh, read verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So, if the Mosai did not choose a few good men, how many brothers? Huh? How many? 144. If the Mosai did not... Because think about this. We numbered as the sin of the sea, right? So 144 is a few. You see what I'm saying? If the Most High did not select those men, all of us would have been as what? Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? They were both destroyed. Except Lot was the only one that, that, that and his daughters that escaped because why? He was a preacher of righteousness. So if the Most High did not send the prophets to wake us up, we would still be destroyed. So now, why is it so hard to allow ourselves to be tamed by the Bible? Because it's in our nature. Give me Jeremiah 2.21. But we're going to get it right, though. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, and verse 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? You see this? The most I planted us a noble vine, but we became a degenerate plant. Why? Because we went backwards. We walked away from the laws of the Most High God. In doing so, we became a degenerate plant. Because the only thing that's going to give us life, that's going to make us holy and noble before the Lord, is keeping His laws. So for as long as we don't want to be tamed, guess what's going to happen? We're going to remain that degenerate plant. And we're just going to become worse and worse and worse. It's only simple. So give me a Jeremiah 4.22. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 22. For my people is foolish, they have not known me. Uh, read. They are sottish children, they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do, to, but to do good they have no knowledge. So what does it mean to be sottish? Stupid. But I got 25 degrees though. According to the Most High, you only smart when you seek Him, when your focus is in this book. That's the only time you're smart. Because if you're smart, you're going to seek God. If you're smart, you, you're going to keep these laws. So does that, mean, does that mean I shouldn't go to school and get a degree? But don't bake on it. Don't. This is the most important thing. Because when they talk about some of, the, uh, some of the apostles, what they say? I perceive they were unlearned, but they had been walking with that man Jesus. I mean, there's something they learned from Christ that made people acknowledge them. Give me Psalm 19, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, and verse 7. 
The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So that's how you get wisdom. That's how you become smart. Read, uh, read um, Jeremiah 4.22 again. It's in keeping the laws, you're going to understand how to be. That's when you're going to have knowledge. Read. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 22. For my people is foolish, they have not known me. They are sottish children, they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. What is good? I need a scripture. Stand up and take the mic. They say to do good they have no knowledge. What is, what is good? Pass the mic. Romans 7 and 12. Read that for me. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. So the law is good. So to, to do good, you must be keeping the laws. That's what doing good is. Because without the law, you won't know what it is to do good. So let's go to uh, Jeremiah 5, uh, start at verse 1. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. You see, the Mosai is more than ready. That's why I said, why should you be speaking no more Isaiah? He's more than ready to forgive you. He's more than ready to raise you up. That's why I said, go in the street and look and search to see if there's any that is seeking the truth. Because John 8, 32 says what? You shall know what? The truth. And the truth? <laughs> so to free yourself, you need to know the truth. So what is the truth? Brother Bezalel, what is the truth? Psalm 119, 142. Read that for me. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So, God's law is the truth. Continue verse 2 in Jeremiah. Verse 2. And though they say, the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. So what spirit is verse 3 describing? A rebellious person. Because God is going to bring hell to your door. To do what? To purge you. That's that fire. But many a time, pride don't allow us to be healed. No matter what he keep bringing to your door, you're too rebellious, you don't want to change. People after people to counsel you to give you the right knowledge for you to follow, you don't want to do it. That's pride, and pride separate from God. So we got to be, be mindful, read. Therefore I said, surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. So when we are hard-headed, that shows that we don't understand God yet. Because God can squeeze the living life out of you. Reduce you to the lowest common denominator. I mean, bring you very low. You remember the cartoons? When the car pass over them, they become flat like a paper. God can reduce you to that level. Where they have to pick you up with a spatula. Even then you might still be rebellious. I don't know. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Because even though we are in a lower state, what God is doing right now is rise, I mean, raising up a nation from a low state. Read 1 Samuel 2, verse 8. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, and verse 8. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth, lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. So he raises up the poor out of the dust. 
Who's the poor in that verse? Is it talking about everybody? Who got a precept for me? Nobody? You look very scared. Are you gonna raise your hand or are you gonna somewhat raise your hand? Give him the mic. Turn it on for him when you pass the mic. Let's go, I'll have a look at it from Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, 32. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 32. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. See that? Zion and Israel, the poor of his people. So it's not talking about the poor from every nation, because Christianity will tell you, hey, yeah, that's talking about everybody. Once you're poor, you of the Lord know. The poor of the Israelites. So when we go back to first seven, he said he raised up the poor out of the dust. What does the dust represent? Huh? Sin and confusion. We're not literally still sitting on the floor rolling in dust. You know, Moses like, okay, let me dust you off. No. We are, con we are confused people. We grew up around all kinds of confusion. Religion. Wicked holidays. Go to the, some, some of you, some, some people might grow up in a house with two mothers, two fathers. That's confusion. He's bringing us out of those confusion. Conf uh, uh, confusion. And um, they say you lift up the beggar from the dunghill. What is a dunghill? From duty. That means we're coming from a very bad state. From a very bad state. No matter what we were in the world, according to the scriptures, we are in a very bad state. So the only way to grow is for us to acknowledge that we're not in a good shape. That's the only way we're going to grow. But for as long as we think that we're something, we're not going to accept our, our condition. And if we cannot accept our condition, we cannot grow. Um, give me first Samuel 15. So now we are sitting, what? Among kings and princes. But believe it or not, we are the kingdom of the Most High God. Right now, like the uh, leadership was saying in New York uh, recently, you look at leadership as what? Regular, regular Negroes. But you have no idea the kind of power the Most High gave them. We are the future rulers of the world. Not the Clinton, not the Bushes. We, the niggas and the Spicks. Meditate on that. Uh, 1 Samuel 15, 17. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 17. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? So, this is talking about who? Actually, let's start out one. Read one, two, three. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, and verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. So now stop. God raised Saul to be king, right? And he sent him on a mission. Saul did not accomplish the mission. But keep arguing that he did do it. So jump to verse, um, the verse prior, 17. Verse 17. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the so, Lord anointed thee king over Israel? So Saul was nothing. Just like today we're nothing, and the Most High is raising us up. So Saul was nothing, the Most High made him king. And all he had to do was obey. But he disobeyed. Go to um, verse 22. Verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. So it's better to obey God than to keep making sacrifices. Today we don't sacrifice animals, but today we fast. 
It's like some of us will sin and then fast. Sin and fast. Sin and fast. It's the same thing as what our forefathers used to do with the sacrifices. So the Most High said, it's better to just get it right than to keep bringing your nasty sacrifices before the Read. A witch God. So yes. when you rebel against God, you are a witch. That's what Saul has become. Read. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So you never want to listen to nothing people say. Whatever's in your head, that's it. That's what? Stubbornness is what? As, as iniquity and idolatry. It's a sin and it's idolatry. Read. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. You see that? It's very simple. Most I call us to do a job. If we do it, he's going to continue rock, rock, rocking with us. If we don't do it, what's going to happen? So, because when he said he had rejected us to be king, I mean, we rejected um, Saul and be, to be a king. Does that, is that only Saul? Give me Revelation 1 and 6. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God. Hath made us what? Kings and priests. We are kings and priests. So the same warning that was given to Saul is for us as well. If we choose not to do what we're supposed to do, we're going to be rejected as well. Just like Saul was rejected. So if we want to stay in the truth, then we must be tamed. Tamed by what? By the Lord. Whatever the Lord says, that's what we're going to do. Let's go back to 1 Samuel, go to chapter 16. Uh, start at verse 1. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Three. And Samuel said, uh, 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 Jump to verse 7. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not man, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So the, when uh, Samuel uh, went to anoint uh, one of the sons of Jesse as king, the first one came looking all buff and big. God said, nah, don't worry about that. It's not about, you know, some dude is like 6'2", which is a good height, muscular, college graduate, probably have a job making a hundred grand. Most I don't give a damn about that. Most I look at the heart. Because Samuel was looking at men through appearance. It's not about appearance. It's not about dressing nice and comfy. It's about keeping his laws. Um, keep re 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 verse, um, read verse 7 again. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refu refused him. But the Lord seeth not as man seeth. The man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So most are looking at your heart. Uh, new brother with a white t-shirt. What is the heart of man? Give me a scripture. State your name, Pastor. Nation. Mark 7, 21. Mark 7, 21. Let's read that. The book of Mark, chapter 7, and verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. So your, your mind is what you used to think. And that's what the most I studies. Because what's going on in your mind, I don't know. But the most I know is. Uh, go back to seven. That's why it says God looking at look at look at on the heart. He knows the heart of man. Read. Um, jump, uh, verse eleven. The book of First Samuel chapter sixteen verse eleven. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse. Sit and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. So they went to fetch David. What was David doing? Guarding the sheep. He was a little boy. See, most I like to take people from low status and bring you up. 
because he never wants you to glory in the uh, wisdom of the world. He wants you to know that he's the one that does it. Uh, read verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. See that? David was a little boy and the most I told Samuel, that's the one, that's the one I want. All his brothers were big dudes in the military already. That means they had knowledge to go about, you know, c conducting war and everything. Most I took somebody with no experience whatsoever to rule a nation. So men can know it's the most that I give knowledge. It's the most that I make you what you are. And for you, for that to happen, you must stay in this book. Let's go to Acts 13. I'm sorry, verse 21, not 12, I'm sorry. The chapter 13, verse 21. The book of Acts chapter 13, verse 21. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Cis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart. So here you have two type of two kings we had, right? Most I raised them both. But one, his heart was not with the Lord. So the most I removed them. The other one, his heart was with the Lord. And the most I protect him and bless him and his son end up being king and, all, and so forth and so on. Establish Israel, basically. So these are the examples we have to know what we got to do in order for us to stay in the truth. So which example should we follow, Saul or David? David, because he's a man after God's heart. Let's read that in the book of Samuel uh, 13. Uh, yeah, 1 Samuel chapter 13, uh, 13, 13 and 14. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain wow. over his people. 13, 13. 13, verse 13. And Samuel said unto Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God. Now, what was the foolish thing that Saul had done? He did not keep the commandments of the Lord. If you want to be in good standing with the Most High God, if you want to be, be called wise or the Most High uh, anointed, you got to do what's right, which is keeping the commandment. But Saul did not do that. Read. Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. But now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now the kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So who was that man? David. So God is showing you the only people that's going to persevere before him are people that are after the Most High's heart. Where do you find the, the, the Lord's heart? In this book, because God is up there, you down here. That's the only thing he left for you to know what his brain is, is like. So if you want to be righteous, you must be tamed because we came from a wild lifestyle. I mean, y'all don't have to answer, but really think about your lifestyle. Many of us used to smoke weed, party all night, sniff crack, shoot up heroin. We came from a wicked life background. Percocet, what are some pills? Oxycodone. E pills. You understand popping E? Ecstasy. Now it's Molly. So we've been, some of you youngins probably pop that pill all day, but be careful. We came from a crazy lifestyle with all the knowledge. I went to college. So with all that knowledge I had, I was still a wild dude. And most of the craziest people are in where? In college. Have no sense. What was that school the bishop visited? Where they say, oh, what was the ratio for uh, STDs? Uh, 70%. 75%. And they had this dude, uh, um, do you know this college is, has 70% people that's infected with STD? He said, I don't care that, that that something is going on tonight. He was there just 
But hold up, you in school, you getting your degree, you should be wise. You in a place where 70 people, 70% 70 of the people are infected and you don't care? You just wanna do whatever? That's crazy. That's the mind from we came out of. Smoking cigarettes is gonna kill you. That means your mind is still not refreshed because stop doing it. Weed, coke, them things gonna kill you. So we have to tame our spirit because if we don't, we're gonna die. Read that verse again. It's the last one. 14. First yeah. Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So if you want position in this truth, this is your blueprint. Because promotion coming not from the east nor the west. That's written in the book of Psalms. It is the most high God who raised people up. So when you want titles or you want positions, all you gotta do is do what the scripture says. And for you to lead, guess what you must do first? Learn how to follow. It's very simple. Give me uh, first Samuel 2, verse 3. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3. Talk no more is exceedingly, exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. You see, the Most High is not about talk. He's more about actions. So, us as a people, we like to talk proudly. Probably because why? We believe in ourselves. Most High is like, nah, nah, nah. Humble your spirit. And then I'm going to see what you do, and then do, and then in turn he's going to do what he's supposed to be doing for you. But if you all talk, no action, then that's all you are. You just like to talk. So let's jump to verse uh, 12. Yep. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Now Eli was who? The high priest, right? He had two sons, but they were the devil the Bible speaks of. They did not know God, but hold up. Their father's the high priest. Raised in the church, in the congregation. So why they were the sons of the devil? Read. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was conceiving with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he struck it into the pan or kettle or calvin or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So, so they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also before they, they brought the fat, the priest's servants came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. You see that? That's arrogance. Talk no more exceedingly proudly. Jump to verse 22. Verse 22. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto, the, all, unto all Israel, and how they lay with the woman that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You see what his sons were doing? Having sex with a lot of the women in the congregation. So why they would do such a thing? Because their spirit was not tamed. They were still wild asses. And Eli knew about it. Read them. And he said unto them, why do, ye, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Yea, ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. So, you see that? If you're sinning against God, who's going who's gonna, who's gonna, to uh, be a judge for you? you got to be careful the things you say, the things you do, because for every action, there's a reaction. The Most High is taking note. So you got to be careful how you walk before the Most High God. 
That's what Eli was telling his son, but guess what? Most already hardened their heart because most I wanted to kill them anyway. Read. And the child Samuel grew on was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Jump to uh, 30. Verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord, but now the Lord saith, be it far from me. But them that honor me will I honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. It's very simple, people. The most I got got no time for jokes, no time for foolishness. You honor God, he's going to honor you. You dishonor him, he's going to dismiss you. Point blank. It's not about feelings. You, the kids were Eli, uh, Eli's kids. You think the most I could be like, ah, you know what, Eli's the priest, let me have mercy. Nope. He wanted to make an example out of them because if the most I can kill the high priest, high priest's son, who else? Who is, who's a regular person in the congregation? No man is above another. And once you're not walking up in accordance to the Lord, the most I'm going to jack you up. Read. Verse 31. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thy arm and the arm of thy father's house, and there shall not be an old man in thy house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in thy house forever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes, and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee, that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophim and Phinehas. And one day they shall die both of them. You see the judgment the Most High laid on Eli's house? It's time I kill everybody. Why? Because he was not correcting his sons knowing that they were doing evil. So let's go to 1 Samuel 4 verse 12. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 12. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came low, Eli sat upon no, his... Oh, sorry, start at verse 11. Verse 11. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. So they were fighting the Philistines, and both of them died during the war. Three. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army, and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli sat upon a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old, and his eyes were dim, that he could not see. But the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army and he said what is there done my son and the messenger answered and said Israel is fled before the Philistines and there hath been also a great slaughter among the people and thy two sons also Ophni and Phinehas are dead and the ark of God is taken and it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break and he died so Eli died too he fell backward on a chair and died. How many times you sit on a chair and then you kind of lean back a little bit? <laughs> Most I can just pull you just a little bit more, you fall on your neck and die. It's very easy for the Most High to kill you. All he wants from us is to obey his word, that's it. But if we don't want to, he's going to do what he has to. Read. For he was an old man in heaven, and he had judged Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, Phineas' wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself in travail, for her pains came upon her. And then about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. So she gave birth because the news troubled her and she gave birth right then and there, read. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, 
The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. So the Mosai took his glory away from Israel. Now here's a question. Why did the Mosai kill Eli? Dad, Ephraim. Spirit left him. <laughs> The Mosai killed him because he didn't, he didn't rebuke um, his sons, according to Leviticus 19.17, and Leviticus 5.1. That's the male one. Leviticus 5 and 1. Read that for me. The book of Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. And if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and his is a wicked soul, and he swear by the Lord his God, and if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness, whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. You see that? It's a very simple scripture. So, let me just ask you guys a question. If you know for a fact somebody got full blown AIDS and they come around you, they cut themselves and want to hug you and put all that blood on you, would you let them hug you like that? Yes, sir. Why? Huh? There's a chance you might catch the disease, right? It's the same thing with sin. You allow people to bring their sin to you and you don't correct it, or you will bring it forth, guess what? You're going to get infected. So the demon that's plaguing this person is going to jump on you as well. And you're going to be in one accord in the wickedness. So be mindful, because that's what happened to Eli. Do not play with sin. That's what I'm going to tell you. Let's go to our uh, second Chronicles 7.14. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal, heal their land. If my people, the Israelite people, if they would just humble themselves, that's a big worry for the Negro. Humility and humbleness, that's a very big word. Because the problem we have as Negroes, we grew up, we always want to show up to one another, always want to portray herself to be better than the other. Keyword, portray. Let me tell you, I used to work for Gucci. I've seen broke people come in, and this is the conversation they would have. Wife and um, husband. Well, you know, you could buy this shoe, I'll buy that shoe. The woman's like, well, what about the red? I ah, don't worry about the red. I'll, I'll figure it out. And it was the first. Why would you not want to pay your rent to buy Gucci shoes? Because you want to step out in the street and portray yourself to be what? A baller. Meanwhile, you're about to lose your apartment. We buy the car to drive on the block. I've seen dudes in the hood, back in New York, within the space of 30 minutes, they drive around the block at least 20 times. Real slow too. Checking your face to see if you're checking out their car. Um, I used to work for this newspaper job. DK Malakaya knows about this dude. This dude also uh, do the newspaper job as a part-time. And he rent cars, he used that money to rent cars to go to the club. Every weekend he rents a different car, Audi, like expensive cars. Just so he could go to the club and the girls would think he's somebody, but really it, the dude is delivering newspapers. Why? Because he want to portray himself to be more than he is. That's why the scripture said if we would humble ourselves, humble ourselves and really pray and seek God's face, only then he would what? Acknowledge it. But humility and humbleness is a very hard thing for the Negroes to do. Trust me, I know. I'm a Negro, in case I don't know this. Um, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. So the whole thing is we must tame our spirit, conform to the ways of God. Isaiah 30, verse 1. The book of Isaiah. Um, actually, start out verse 9. 
verse 9? Yeah. The book of Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. So this is our character. We are liars. We don't want to hear God's laws. Okay? We prefer, uh, how they call it, sympathetic ears. We prefer people that's rubbing our back door. It's going to be all right. We don't like the raw truth. But here's the thing, the raw truth is what's going to get you, get your mind right. Baby in you is not, if I have a son or a daughter and I keep babying them, am I preparing them for life? It's the same thing in the truth. We have to hear that raw truth. That's what's called provoke unto love. If I'm provoking you, are you going to be, it's going to get under your skin sometimes. But I'm doing it for a good reason. That's that little nod, you know what I'm saying? But why you get mad? Because I'm always nodding. We don't want to be reminded of the things that we need to change in our lives. So we find people to become a nuisance in our lives. But that's love. Read. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy the cease. So we can't continue with that spirit right there. The most I created us and is telling us this is who we are. We don't want nobody to tell us the right thing. We prefer to remain doing what we've always been doing, thinking we're right, but most I raise people up to provoke you unto love. We have to speak the truth. So sometimes it's not going to sit well with you. But at the end of the day, are we telling you the wrong thing to do or the right thing to do? If we're telling the right thing to do and it's coming out the scripture, listen. You know, like, you want to expose, but just, just take a deep breath. Ooh, and swallow that pill. You understand? The medicine might be better, but guess what? It's going to help you to be better. So therefore, you know, there's a tea named Cerisy, very, very bitter. But it's real good for you. So back home, this is how we drink it. Hold your nose and swallow one shot. Because it's actually good for you. Because we are a sick people. And understand one thing. The sickness we have, until Christ returns, we're never going to be fully healed. This is where, just like in the world, certain sickness you have, you got to take medication until the day you die. Because what happens when you choose not to take the medication? You're going to die. So it's the same thing with the truth. This is the medicine. So if you don't find yourself anchoring yourself in this all day, every day, talking about it, reading about it, that's the medicine. Because once you, once you spend a day or two, you don't open your Bible, trust me, your mind is on the next level. Because idleness teaches much evil. And the devil loves it when you're idle. Because that's when he slides through. Have you concoct in your head all kind of wicked de devices. You start thinking everybody hates you. Where, where do you get that idea from? How can people that don't know you hate you? So, this is the medicine. Like I tell some people, it's like we're full of dirty water, and to, to clean ourselves, because we need water in us, and since we have dirty water in us, plug the pipe in. It's like a bucket that's full of dirty water, you stuff the pipe in there, turn it on, and let it run. Then the bucket's gonna overflow, eventually all the dirty water is gonna be replaced by clean water. But realize one thing, many a time we come in the truth, we do just that. But once the water is clean, guess what we do? Turn off the water and pull out the pipe. What happened with stagnant water? It gets dirty again. That's when mosquitoes, all kind of vermin stuff, flying out of that water. So which means, the pipe that you plug in, which is this Bible, got to stay in there. Otherwise, eventually the water will get dirty again. But because it was clean at one point, in your head you might still think the water is clean. But how do you check your water? Check to see if you're plugged in, because if you're not plugging, there's no water in here somewhere. 
So the only way the water is going to remain clean only if you stay glued and plugged to this. That's your water pipe. Give me the scripture for water, give me the word. Ephesians 5, 26. Ah, uh, my man, read that. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So cleanse what? What is the it that you're going to cleanse? Yourself, your spirit. That's the only way to clean it, by staying in this book. Then in this book, you're going to see things about yourself like, damn. You don't look left, nobody's around. Damn, I'm a wicked nigga. <laughs> But that's the first step to winning the battle. Being able to acknowledge that, yo, something wrong with me. Once you can do that, trust me, there's a lot of hope for you. Because if I'm sick and I never take to note that I am sick, will I ever go to the doctor? And then one day I'm just going to drop dead. Because I never acknowledge it whatsoever. Go back to Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Stop for a second. It says prophesy unto us smooth things. So the opposite of smooth things is, is what? Bitter and rough. So those are the right things you should be gonna hear are not gonna be, hey, you know, Jesus loves you, my brother. Right, brother? Right, brother Ezekiel? Jesus. <laughs> that Christian spirit, we gotta shake it. This truth is rough and tough. Turtle shell or alligator skin? Pick one. Give me Leviathan. That's a skin I don't want. Right. <laughs> I don't want nothing but him, and I don't want nothing to pierce. Because yes, sometimes you do catch spirit. Like, damn, bro, you have to call, call me out like that? And you don't call the brother for two days, three days, then you gotta, you gotta repent from it. Ah, let me, let me get over there. Hey, brother, what's going on, man? I don't like the way you say that thing, but you know what, you was right, man. I got the devil on. And keep it moving. Because that's love. How many times I pull your ears? See how big his hands got? Yeah, it's stressed out. Keep reading. Verse 12. Wherefore th thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh down at an instant. So, if you trust in oppression and despise God's word, out of the blue your destruction is going to come. No warning, nothing. You're just going to fall. This is why you see people in the truth years, and then one day, just one day, like, what the hell is coming out of this mouth? This dude helped build me up in the truth. But one day, it just, pew, come to find out later on, you know, there's many things they try to fix in him he didn't want to fix. That was fearing me. Because it shows you, you can never be too safe. So you must stay humble, stay humble to this Bible. That's your only way out. Read. Verse 14, and he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured to take fire from the earth, or to take water withal out of the pit. So that's your destruction will be so great, there will be no remedy for it. Read. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, and quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. You see quietness? The Negro don't know that word. That's why the scripture says study to be quiet. Because when you learn, your spirit gonna learn to humble. My scripture that says uh, a wicked woman, she knows nothing. She's loud. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. Don't know nothing when was running their mouth. The scripture tells you, be quiet. When you're full of wisdom, when you study this Bible, you're going to be quiet. There's not many talk you're going to entertain. 
and you're gonna have confidence in what? In this truth. Not the other way around. Go jump to verse one in the same chapter. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse one. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So the scripture of destruction to you, if your, your, your counsel does not come from this Bible, then you're asking for destruction. So you got to be careful about counsels. Make sure it's coming out of this Bible. Because when you don't take counsel of God, you cover yourself with a spirit. Yeah, you got them devil on you, you got a spirit on you. The only way for that spirit to come out is for you to go to the Lord. So if you come up with a spirit that is not of the Lord, you're going to get destroyed. That's what I say, woe to, read it again. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. When you do that, you're going to add sin to sin. So in order for you not to do that, you must go back to what? To this Bible. So you can learn how to be tamed. And it's a beautiful thing when you get the tamed. Uh, go to Hebrews 2 and 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. You see that? We should be careful. Give it earnest heed. Because sometimes the word can slip out of your mind. And you don't even realize that it's slipping. So if we're not walking right, yes, it's going to slip away. Because why? The word is the spirit, right? And where there's sin, is the spirit of the Lord going to dwell there? So we got to be mindful that the spirit of the Lord does not depart from us. Give me um, 2 Peter 2, 1 to 10. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2. Chapter. Chapter 1, verse 10. Book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, and verse 10. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You see that? Do diligence. You got to make an earnest effort to make sure that you are in there. You understand? To make sure you got to give due diligence because if you don't, you will fall. Give me John 11, 26. So a lot of time, when it comes to effort, like I like to run. And I've been running my whole life. But guess what? There's not a time where I wake up, people will run, and I was chirpy and happy about it. I have to keep pushing myself to do it. So many a time in the shoot, many a things, it's going to be a struggle for you to overcome it, but guess what? You just got to keep pushing, keep pushing till you get it done right. Read. The book of John, chapter 11, verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Believest thou this? How do you believe, guys? Because if you believe, you'll never die. But how do you show you believe? Brother Ezekiel, give me a precept. Sirach chapter 32, verse 24. Let's go there. Sirach 32, verse 24. The book of Ecclesiastes is Sirach chapter 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment, and he that trusteth in him shall never fare the worst. So if you believe in the Lord, you're going to take heed to the commandment. You're going to listen to them and you're going to do them. And it says you shall never fear the worst. Whatever condition your life is in, you're not going to stress, you're not going to worry. Why? Because you know the most I got your back. Because there's nobody, like the scripture say, um, look at the generation of old. See, did any trust in the Lord? And it was confounded. So that's how you're never going to fear the worst. The worst thing that can happen to you, whatever condition your life is in, Mosa, you know Mosa is going to rescue you. So to believe is to take heed to the commandments of God. Give me Romans 8. We must believe, guys, and be to believe it requires action. 8, 5, uh, start of 5. The book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 5. But they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So that scripture is basically telling you, if you don't tame yourself through those laws, you're going to die. 
Because there's no room in the kingdom for wild asses. Only tame ones. Read. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. No, that's friendship with God. Is enmity against against God. A sinful mind is enmity with God. That means you are directly at odds with the Most High God. Read. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Subject to the law. Tamed to the law. When you have a carnal mind, you don't want to be tamed. So that separates you from God. Read. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you do live in the flesh, you cannot please God. So it's up to you now to meditate upon the scriptures and see whether or not you are carnally minded or spiritually minded. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.